Hello and welcome to this lesson all about should you buy soundproofing curtains or not? So this is something that I've always thought, uh, I don't know about these curtains. Can they really keep sound out of your room or keep your room sound out from going outside your house? In this video, we're going to find out. Before we jump in, I want to let you know that I have a 45 minute soundproofing workshop. This is totally free. You can sign up by following the link in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you in there. You'll learn all about soundproofing, take a deep dive, get a full design for how to build your own soundproof home recording studio. So if you're ready for that, definitely check it out. I also want to say that you can sign up for that free soundproofing workshop at Soundproof Your Studio. Dot com. That is soundproofyourstudio.com if you're listening on our podcast. Thanks so much. Let's jump into the video right now. All right, first things first. The name soundproofing curtains is completely misleading, and not all companies are doing this. Some are calling them acoustic curtains or things like that, which is a little bit better. The term soundproofing in and of itself is also misleading. There's actually no way you can fully soundproof a room and keep 100% of the sound out without it being, you know, like, 20 feet underground or something like that. So what we're always doing with soundproofing is sound reduction. We're trying to reduce the volume of the sound that can come in or out of your room. The way that soundproofing works is that you're using mass. The more mass, the better. You're gonna make your room airtight, and you're also going to re reduce the amount of transmission of sound from the outside to the inside by reducing what are called flanking channels where sound can travel through the materials in your building and transition the sound from one side to the inside of your building. I know that's a lot, but what is important to understand is that a curtain can do literally none of that. It has no mass. It is fabric. It is not airtight because it's not sealing up your window, making it so that there's an airtight seal around it. And it has nothing to do with flanking channels because it's literally just hanging on a curtain rod. So it's literally doing nothing to soundproof your room. You might ask, what is it doing then? And that is a great question. The answer is that it is absorbing sound. It is actually in the category of acoustic treatment, if I was going to label it as anything. What acoustic treatment does is it absorbs frequencies, which are just sound waves at different pitches that are coming into the material and it sucks it up, absorbing it, rather than reflecting it back in the room. So a piece of glass, a window, is going to reflect sound back into the room because it's hard surface that sound will literally just bounce right off of and come back through. So none of that sound is getting absorbed. Sound that's coming through the window is not getting absorbed because it's simply traveling through the glass. If you put soundproofing curtains up in front of your window, some of the sound, some of the frequencies that come through that glass from the outside will be absorbed into the curtain. And we'll talk more about that later in this video, but it's important to understand this concept. It is not soundproofing, it is sound absorption. And some of the frequencies coming from the inside of your room towards the outside will also be absorbed into this curtain and turned into heat. That is just how absorption works. All right, so I wanna jump in and say, let's see how much better does a soundproofing curtain absorb compared to a traditional acoustic panel that you would put in your recording studio. Let's take a deep dive into that right now. All right, so this is a company that I found. There's many soundproofing companies out there. This one's called Quiet Curtains. The reason I like them is they had this little tab here called Lab Tests, and they have a nice looking website. They look pretty legit, you know, not just something that's on Amazon. Um, but the lab test when you're dealing with acoustic treatment or soundproofing or anything like that is really what you're looking for. Some scientific data, like, does this stuff really work? So if you click on that link, you'll be taken to this PDF here. Uh, this was done at a Western Electroacoustic Laboratory, which is all good. You know, you want to see these seals of approval. This is all legitimate ways of testing absorption. Um, so if we go down here, we're going to look at the absorption coefficient. Now the absorption coefficient here, the higher the number, the better. The closer you get to one is ideal. One would mean 100% absorption. And as you'll see 
in the next thing I talk about, you can even go above one and I'll explain that, but that's kind of complicated. So the lower the number, if we look down here, 0 0.05, that's not great. That's saying that it's not absorbing most of the frequencies at 100 hertz. So in this diagram, you can see that we have 5,000 hertz, 4,000 hertz. This is pretty high. People don't usually go above 5,000 for these tests, even though in recording studios, we go all the way up to 20 hertz, um, and a lot of information is, is above that. But for the sake of testing and comparing, this is what they usually do. Um, what we're concerned about a lot is down here in these lower ranges, 250 and below is really hard to absorb. And that's where a lot of your low frequencies that are you still can hear uh, are going to come through, like car noise, um, lawnmower, low hums. And then within your studio, that could be things like your bass amp, your guitar amp, uh, even singing. The people can sing down that low. So, you know, that's, this is still important information. Uh, the absorption in sabines, sabines is um, something that we're not going to talk about here, but this is actually a unit of absorption that talks about how much uh, energy is being absorbed here. But I'm just going to look at the coefficients for now to keep things simple and compare it with the other acoustic panel. So let's take a look now at fiberglass. I'm just going to go over here. If we look over here at sound absorption coefficients, this is the actual specs for Owens Corning 703 and 705. This is what most acoustic panels are made out of. There's other options, but I'm gonna use this because this is the recommended for most acoustic purposes. So sound absorption coefficients, we're gonna look at 703 because this is usually the better one. And it says unfaced, just meaning that there's nothing in front of it like drywall or anything like that. So this one goes up to 4,000 Hertz. And we'll talk about this NRC in a second here, but essentially this is the thickness. So you can get anywhere from one inch to four inch thick Owens Corning. And if you're trying to treat bases, base frequencies, those lower frequencies, the thicker is always going to be better. So we can look at this four inch panel. If you were going to put this in your window, I think that getting the four inch one would be a good idea. And essentially, at 100, uh, at 125 hertz, you are getting a 0.51. So if we go back over here uh, at 100 hertz, they're getting just a 0 0.05. So that, that's a huge difference in the low frequency range. That's that's why this these absorption panels are going to do a lot better. If we look at 250, you're getting 1.19. So the reason that it's absorbing 100 percent of 250 Hertz and even higher than that is because you're dealing with a three dimensional object. The Co Owens Corning has sides on it. And so when sound hits the sides, you're actually able to get more than hundred percent absorption because the surface that is facing the sound, it counts as hundred percent. And then the fact that you're getting even more absorption on the sides means that you're getting even more absorption than the face itself. It's kind of a weird technicality but it's important to note because it is confusing. So if we go back over to our soundproofing curtains, you're at 250 Hertz, you're only getting 0.3. So that's another huge difference. Uh, with that uh, Owens Corning 703, you're getting 100% absorption at 250 Hertz. And that's just massive. At uh, 500, it's 1.24, 1.13. So all of this range here is a is 100% absorption. You lose a little bit up here at 4,000 hertz, uh, but not not bad at all. The NRC is just uh, an average of all the frequencies. So they're saying 1.15 for this, and if you go down to one inch, it's always going to be a little bit worse. But overall, any amount of thickness of Owens Corning is going to outperform your soundproofing curtains across the entire frequency band. So when you get up to these higher frequencies, 0 0.72, 0 0.7, those are pretty good, but it's still not as good as that 100% absorption you're gonna get from an acoustic panel if you were gonna put the acoustic panel over your window. Let's just take a quick look at some of the best soundproofing curtains out there. This is just a quick Bob Villa. I don't know much about this, quick Google search. And I clicked on check out this best overall and it comes out to 3820. So, you know, not super expensive, and it would look kind of nice. You get these thick blackout curtains. Again, this would be kind of nice in a living room. If we look over here for these quiet curtains, which is where I got the lab test data from, um, you have to get a quote. So I'm imagining that these lab tested quiet curtains are probably more expensive um, than the Amazon 
recommended ones, but I also assume that they're better quality and clearly uh, if they're taking the time to get lab tests, they actually probably work better as well. This is, I hope, enlightening to see the differences that you have here. Let's jump back to the other video to see the conclusion of should you get soundproofing curtains or not. Okay, so now you've seen in depth, probably more than you ever wanted to, an understanding of how sound absorption works, sound absorption coefficients, and comparing sound absorption coefficients between different materials. These are crucial concepts to understand if you're going to be comparing and trying to understand if you're getting ripped off buying a soundproofing curtain when you really want to keep out low bass frequencies. So what is my conclusion? What would I say you should do? Should you buy soundproofing curtains? Should you stay away? Well, it depends on what the application is for. If you are trying to soundproof or sound absorb in your recording studio, I would highly recommend you probably don't waste money on these curtains. The main reason being that most of the sound coming from a sound recording studio is in those low bass frequencies. You're gonna be playing bass guitar, you might have a kick drum, um, even acoustic guitars can reach down into the 200 hertz range, which as we saw, will not do a good job of absorption with those curtains. So what I would recommend if you're in a studio and you have windows is to build a custom sized acoustic pan that will absorb a lot more of those lower frequencies and something that you could just stick in the window or put in front of the window and try to seal it up as best as you can so that you're absorbing more sound. Again, this is not soundproofing, but it is sound absorption, so you will reduce the volume of the frequencies that are coming in and out of your room. Now, if you're in a living room and you have no intention of doing big time recording and it's not a recording studio, sure, Buy some soundproofing curtains. They will certainly, it seems like based on the data, reduce the amount of sound that is coming in and out of your window by absorbing it. So let's talk about cost real quick. I did some quick research. I know that building DIY panels the way I like to build them costs roughly around $60. There's a link for how to build your own acoustic panels below this, and you could probably click it up above me on this link right here in the YouTube video. So. You can also buy acoustic curtains for roughly about $40. If you wanna save $20 but not have as efficient of a product absorbing frequencies in your room, then I don't know. I don't think I would go for the curtains just to save $20. However, if aesthetics are important to you, if this is a living room and you don't wanna have a weird panel in your window, then yes, of course, buy those curtains, make it look really nice, and it'll be better than having regular curtains or no curtains at all. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, just a little deep dive to kind of demystify this world of soundproofing curtains. And if you are interested in learning more about soundproofing, check out that free soundproofing course that I have. Free soundproofing workshop, 45 minutes of in-depth teaching, teaching you exactly how to design and build your soundproof studio. You can check that out in the description below or go to soundproofyourstudio.com. Thanks so much for watching. There are new videos and new podcast episodes every Monday. So subscribe, like all that good stuff and leave that five-star review on Apple Podcasts if you are loving the content. I really appreciate it and it helps us reach more in soundproofing enthusiasts just like yourself. All right, I'll see you all next week.